Hi, today we're going to take a look at an interesting uh, series of logic analyzers from a company that I hadn't heard of before, Zero Plus. They're a Taiwanese company and they very kindly um, sent in a selection of their products. Now, um, go check out their webpage, I'll link it in down below, and I'm actually amazed at the range of stuff that they've got. They've got like this Arduino starter kit with their, which they've sent in, which I don't have price or any other details on. I don't seem to, doesn't seem to be available yet. So I might leave that for a second video. We've got a low cost uh, logic analyzer here called the Logic Cube or the Lap C series. And this uh, ranges anywhere from $135 for the bottom of the range unit, which is cheap as, up to uh, $1,900 for the uh, top of the range unit depending on the memory configuration and the number of channels and stuff like that. They've got about a half dozen um, models in between that at various uh, price levels. And they've got this F standard unit here, which looks like it might be some USB hub thing, but it's actually not. It uses USB 3 connections for the interface to the probes, uh, which we'll take a look at, which is quite novel. And uh, this one goes, um, there's I think uh, at least two models in this series. Uh, it starts at $3,000 and goes up to uh, $6,000 dollars for top of the range unit for a 64 channel job super high speed super professional and on top of that they got units which actually they do uh protocol analyzers as well they do uh serial generators and stuff like that and they've even got one um emmc memory analyzer system which is like twenty five thousand dollars worth for professional design analysis of emmc memory used in computers and and hard you know cheap uh, cheaper hard drives and cheaper interfaces and stuff like that. So, you know, really a wide range of tools. So we'll actually do teardowns and have a quick play around with these two here. And as I said, I'll leave the uh, Arduino starter kit for later. So let's get to it. Zero Plus High Quality Professional Instruments Taiwan Excellence Award, I guess, 2009. They've been going for a long time and they'd want to for all the stuff that they've developed. And here's the different models. Uh, I believe that we've got this top of the range unit, which is uh, $1,900. But as, as I said, the 16 channel uh, unit down here um, starts at $135. So very affordable. And I believe, but have not checked this yet, that uh, a, in 2016, they say on their website that they are actually giving away all their protocol decoders for free. And they have got a metric buttload of protocol decoders. It's absolutely incredible. I'll have to show you the list. It's one of the most comprehensive lists of uh, protocol decoders I've seen. But yeah, anyway, from 135 bucks up to like, you know, closer towards uh, two grand, depending. And let's have a squiz at it. I love the case. Haven't even opened it yet. There's this uh, $129 optional uh, pulse width trigger module as well. So that's interesting. I'm not sure why they couldn't do that inside the unit. Uh, inside, presumably, uh, you're going to find FPGAs inside all these doing all the heavy lifting. Um, heavy lifting. And these are, while they are USB logic analyzers, they are not like like the cheap Sally Logic, for example. These actually have built-in sample memory, so they're not streaming logic analyzers. So let's have a squeeze at this. There it is. It's our Logic Cube. So this is the 32-channel uh, version, but you can get the 16-channel version. I presume there's just like an extra board in there with some extra hardware. So, um, and the memory, I would presume that the memory is the same, and it's just software uh, limited, but uh, we won't know that until we uh, take the thing apart. So we'll do a quick uh, tear down. 500 milliamps, so USB uh, powered. It's got your standard 0.1 inch uh, header, all nicely color coded. That looks very nice. We've just got a power button on the front and some LEDs and USB uh, 1.1. So we get a USB cable. We get the requisite uh, uh, into like um, uh, just you know flying lead uh, cables because these are not particularly uh, quick uh, we're talking about a 75 megahertz bandwidth across all the models uh, from the low end one has a hundred uh, meg samples per second hundred megahertz uh, sample rate in timing analysis uh, mode and I think 75 in state analysis mode and the top of the range uh, one has uh, 200 megahertz uh, sample rate and uh, hundred megahertz state analysis uh, mode. So, you know, uh, great for most, you know, generic uh, uses for a logic analyzer. No problems whatsoever.
And sample memory on these ranges from uh, 32k per channel for the bottom of the range uh, unit, 100 and, uh, the 130 odd dollar unit, up to 2 megabits uh, per channel for this uh, top of the range 32 channel unit, which is the 32-2000 for those playing along at home. So that's not a huge amount of memory, it's probably adequate for most general purpose use, but it does have sample compression as well up to eight times. So you can multiply it depending on the scenario of uh, what you're actually measuring, uh, the signals you're measuring. It can actually enable sample compression, which then uh, in you know can multiply your memory by effectively up to eight times. So um, I'm a big fan of logic analyzers that have both hardware memory like this and software compression based memory as well. You pretty much get the best of both worlds. The software compression is really handy when you have, uh, you're trying to measure things that have packets like spread very widely apart. You know, you might have a packet which lasts for a microsecond of data you want to sample and then it's only once every second. Well, you don't want to be pissing away your memory by sampling all those zeros so you can get sample rate uh, compression. So I don't believe this compression on this is as good as uh, other logic analyzers I've seen. They only claim up to eight times, but it's going to be handy. So what else have we got? We should have our requisite test clips in there. Yep, we've got our, all our little color-coded easy hooks. Very nice. We get our software. Software's what it's all about, of course, and some installation guide and whatnot. Because the thing with these logic analyzers, you know, for 130 bucks retail, there's not much in them. There's going to be like an FPGA and then a USB interface micro um, and some uh, input front end uh, to do the plus minus six volts um, a trigger. It's got adjustable trigger threshold level uh, from plus minus uh, 6 volts in like 0.1 volt steps or something like that. So I'll have a bit of circuitry for that. But there's not much in these things, which is why the likes of, say, the uh, Saley Logic Analyzer, uh, you can buy a clone on eBay for like one-tenth the price and you just download the software and boom, you can use it. And they just can't stop people from doing that. Um, and I don't know if there's any clones of the Zero Pluses out there, but that's where all their money goes. It's not necessarily in the hardware, although that F-Series that we'll take a look at is probably some real um, decent high-end hardware in it. But something like this is not you know, hasn't particularly got a lot of expensive hardware in it. So it's all in the software, and trust me, as someone who has developed Logic Analyzer software and used to sell it, um, my own one way back in the day, um, which I'm sure I showed in a video somewhere, anyway, it's a lot of work, especially all the protocol decoding and everything else. Um, so, yeah, all the values in the software, not necessarily the hardware, they, you know, you almost give the hardware away, but, but even though the hardware might be identical between the 100 and, or not... Huge amount difference between the $135 one and the $1,800 one. You're paying for the number of channels and you're paying for, you know, the software. You're paying for the software development, basically. Anyway, let's crack it open. And we're in like Flynn and there it is. Um, not a huge amount of hardware, but that's very nice. I like the look of that. Um, they've got a nice little uh, light pipes here to get from the uh, LEDs up, uh, which are up here, and guide the light up to the uh, center of that. Oops, the switch fell out. And as you can see... They've got a Zero Plus branded chip in here. Now, I doubt this is going to be a custom ASIC, but you never know. But they've obviously had it, had it branded to their own uh, chip. So what that one is, you know, we're not going to... Well, could we use the logic analyzer itself to probe its own clacker and figure out what that chip is? Anyway, I won't be doing that in this video. But we've obviously got some sort of uh, USB interface chip here. And then we've got our sample memory up here, that'd be uh, SRAM of course, none of that DRAM rubbish. Actually, this is very interesting. Look at the, the presume that's the day code, 29th week 09. Um, is it an ASIC which they developed a long time ago or maybe like a custom gate array or something like that perhaps? Um, maybe they have gone to that effort so that wouldn't be easy to uh, uh, clone, really. So let's have a look here. We've got a uh, LVT16 uh, 245, so yep, that's our input uh, logic buffer. And this one over here is actually an FCT uh, 245, so once again, that's just another uh, transceiver. You may not be able to read that, but I've checked that under the Mantis. So, we haven't found our comparator yet. And do we have a Cypress SRAM there for those playing long at home? And a USB interface chip, I'm not sure what that puppy is. I'll have to look up that, but uh, yeah, not a huge amount else, our comparators. Must be over here. Have to take the label off. 
And nope, we've got another identical um, LVT16245 transceiver under there. So we've got two of those. And if we go over here, I have no idea what that one is. Can't find any info on that whatsoever. So where's Wally? Where is the logic level threshold comparators? This unit is supposed to have up to plus minus six volts selectable threshold for each channel. Are they do, doing some sort of weird resistor summing thing going on here? Driving and then a like, I don't. Weird. So they're definitely not doing it in the probes, because there are no probes. Um, like, it can't be doing it in the custom ASIC, because that's on the other side of the transceiver over here. You've got to do it on the input side of the transceiver. So I'm baffled as to how they're achieving that. Hmm. Anyway, I m maybe expected, like, a second board in here for the extra, extra 16 channel one, but uh, this is, like, the 32 channel model, so I presume it's just a programming difference between, and maybe they only populate all the passives and, you know, they only populate one of these or something like that for the 16 uh, channel version, but the PCB layout's likely to be uh, absolutely identical between the two models, and... Once again, you might say, yeah, that's a ripoff. One's 135 bucks right at the bottom end. The other one's like 1800 bucks right at the top end. But they've got to pay for all the software development. That's just how it works. And this puppy right down in here is a microchip uh, E squared prom. So is that where they're storing the uh, product configuration or something like that, perhaps? Hmm, might be hackable. I don't know. Good on you, Pete. Version 1.0B. Um, <laughs> Hasn't been many changes. I guess Pete's good. He got it right the first go. And no surprises for finding the pulse with trigger module is just a lattice ISP mark um, PLD. So yeah, that's all it does is they implement pulse triggering. So this is an optional thing. I'm not sure how it plugs into your system because it doesn't plug into the logic analyzer anyhow. So I guess you'd have to RTFM read the friggin' manual for that one. Aha, there you go. It does actually hook into the uh, uh, this side of it. Is that like a dedicated interface for something like that? Hmm. But obviously there was a customer need for uh, pulse with the uh, pulse with trigger module. They couldn't do it in their ASIC or whatever it was, so they had to develop a little external doodad to do it. But anyway, that's not a USB logic analyzer. This is a USB logic analyzer. <laughs> As I said, I believe it starts at three grand, but we have the, this is the F standard uh, series. This is the fully um, optioned up 64 channel version, the LAP F1 64 channel. So USB 3 interface requires a fair bit of grunt. Nine volts at 5.5 uh, amps. Thank you very much. And let's have a look. On the side here, we've got our USB R3, but it's it's basically not designed to stream. It is it's got hardware memory built in, capture memory, all that sort of stuff. It's not a USB streaming, but you acquire so much data and you want to get it out quick, you can do that. But it look, it's got a uh, little uh, micro USB clock out, a stack, whatever that is. I don't know. I have to read the manual um, and clock in and DC, uh, a couple of fans, where are they? Yeah, a couple of fans on the other end because it, uh, it's probably going to get a bit warm inside this puppy. And look, they actually use USB 3 as the probe interface. Let me show you the probes. And it's got trigger out for uh, going to, you know, system integration and other uh, sorts of stuff. They even provide you a nice looking BNC cable. Sweet. Now check out what you get. In fact, that's not all of it. Uh, you get a squillion, well, 64, I guess, um, US little uh, micro um, uh, USB 3 uh, cable. So standard uh, USB 3 to micro uh, USB 3. A little tiny short ones. Nice. And they're all uh, color coded so that you can uh, get the different channels. Sweet. I like that. Um, and check out what we've got. In all of this, we've got our uh, easy hooks, of course, but in these, we have, once again, 64 of these, all color-coded. We have, curiously, look at this. This is our uh, micro USB uh, 3. We've got a little trimmer pot in there for eh, 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 um, tweaking the uh, uh, compensation of this thing. 
um, you know, hold your tongue at the right angle and compensate the probe. I don't know what the extra two pins out there is for. Maybe that's to go off to it. It's the same as the input. Anyway, we've got the uh, standard twisted pair uh, input. Now, the thing with this is that is when you're designing a system, uh, that you know you're going to, like a real complex digital system, you know you're going to have to debug it with a logic analyzer, protocol decoder, you're going to have to, you know, like debug all the memory system and everything else. Um, <clears throat> you won't jump to the final prototype, uh, you won't find, jump to the final product version of your PCB, or you might, but you'll also design a version of your PCB that has a whole bunch of these 0.1 inch uh, breakout headers usually right around the chip that you want to debug. So the chip will be there and you'll have a whole bunch of headers surrounding that so that during debug, and that'll be a special debug version of the board, special development version of your product PCB, where you just go around and plug in your 64 channels right around your memory chip or your processor or whatever it is you're trying to debug. So anyway, um, that's rather interesting. It's a little bit how you're doing um, in terms of the heat shrink, uh, a little bit uh, do-it-yourself. Um, it, not hugely uh, professional. I don't know why they just didn't, you know, they're making enough of these things. Don't know why they just didn't mould a, uh, like a custom little case. That wouldn't have uh, cost much to enclose that. But anyway, they've gone for the heat sink, uh, heat shrink solution. So we'll cut one of those off and uh, have a look. But these are the probes. So they use the uh, USB uh, 3, of course, to go over to the unit. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's not actually USB. This won't be a USB interface. Um, they're just using the USB 3 cable for its uh, ubiquitousness, its cheapness, its uh, controlled impedance, everything else for high speed uh, differential pair. So that's basically what they're using the thing for. They're probably uh, transferring some power over as well uh, for doing this. So USB 3 was actually a smart uh, choice there. So we'll just uh, snip this puppy open and uh, see what she has to offer in there. We can see the decoupling caps on the bottom side here, and I'm a fan of the heat shrink uh, construction over boards like this, but for a, a $3,000 to slash $6,000 logic analyzer, you, you expect a case. I mean, I didn't expect to see that. There we go. Oh, they've put uh, the strain relief either side of the piece. Oh, they've blobbed it. They've blobbed it. Oh, look at that. How rude. We've been slimed. Um. Yeah, so we just won't know what's under there. Anyway, it's obviously got uh, power, and you can see the differential <coughs> pair. These are all like individual uh, channels, so the differential pair carries the data, and then they be using the uh, power pins to power all that. The compensation uh, uh, trimmer resistor there, and that's about all she wrote. There's not a huge amount on there. Some decoupling on the bottom. So whether or not that's some sort of, you know, custom uh, front end solution, I don't know. Because this one has a one gig bandwidth, or it's one gig sample rate, I think. So this one is like, this logic analyzer is serious business. So, yeah. Um, but we won't ever know. Oh, boo-hoo. So anyway, this looks and feels like a serious bit of kit. So let's crack it open. All right, let's take this sucker off. I think it's, it's going to lift... We're gonna lift off. Ta-da! We're in Lake Flynn, and there it is. Whoa! Isn't that nice? Wow! Getting your money's worth. Oh, look at that RFI gasket right across the top there. Isn't that beautiful? Spongy RFI gasket uh, sealing down the uh, top of the uh, top of the USB connectors right through to the front panel to stop the uh, all the little electrons escaping. Beautiful. So this one's actually a 2015 design, uh, by the looks of it, or at least the last revision was, uh, which is quite um, and much more recent than the other one, which uh, dates from the uh, 2000s. Um, so as we've seen common in these sorts of products, like this is $3,000 or $6,000, depending on which configuration, might even be more for a higher end one. You don't, and you're man not manufacturing the hardware in high volume, you just don't worry about cost in these sort of things. So once again, you find that they've used these little expensive power bricks. These are not cheap, you know, they're, I don't know, five or ten bucks a pop or something, or even more, you know, if you're buying from DigiKey, like 20 bucks a pop. Little, uh, I, are these the TI ones or the linear uh, technology ones? But um, anyway, little DC to DC can power, uh, power bricks, you know, designed to uh, do all the voltage rails for the uh, you know, the various you know, FPGA and other logic, and they've got no less than two, four, 
six, eight, nine of those inside this. So yeah, it's spared no expense. Oh, check out the check out the PTC there on the input. Oh wow, that's serious business. Look at that. So the designer just went, oh bugger this, we want to protect that. Well, it's marked as a fuse, so it might be one of those uh, uh, solid state resettable uh, fuses. Is it marked? Yes, it is. So they clearly just went, oh bugger that, I'm sticking in the biggest, baddest ass one I can fit in there. Beauty, she'll be right. Now, interestingly, there's a bunch of uh, unpopulated connectors. There's a, a 0.1 inch header up there, maybe some uh, debug development uh, programming slash interface. But look at all these little SMA coax connectors along there. I wonder what they're for. Hmm. And for the massive amount of sample memory, they've gone for an off the shelf. Uh, what is that? DDR3 1600. There we go. Well, that, you know, it makes sense because this thing is one gig sample per second sample rate. So, yeah, what a beast. And while the rest of it, there's not a huge amount of, uh, you know, extra stuff in here. We've got our USB uh, 3 interface for those playing along at home. Not sure what that one is. Can you read it? I don't know. Not too entirely fussed about that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you don't need any of the uh, transceivers on here or anything like that. You don't need the uh, logic level uh, threshold comparators or anything like that because it's simply receiving a twisted pair signal. That's all done in the probe. You receive a twisted pair signal on each of the uh, USB connectors and Bob's your uncle. But there's a whole bunch of dip switches in there and it doesn't seem to be one per channel so there's one two three four five six seven oh there's eight of them okay so maybe some sort of bank configuration or something doing i don't know but yeah it's basically all all the twisted pairs are just going to flow into this uh badass beastie over here which is going to be once again some sort of custom fpga or a custom gate array or uh asic slash uh fpga Anyway, you certainly uh, can't fault that uh, hardware. It's very, very nicely uh, designed and laid out. Let's check the bottom. I don't seem to expect anything. No, just your regular uh, bypass cap uh, passives. There's a couple of others over here to do with whatnot. I don't know. Uh, logic level uh, transceivers, perhaps. Um, that'd be just about it. But yeah, uh, what that main beastie is there, I'm going to have to clip off that heatsink. But uh, there's nothing else there. All the differential pairs, I can't see the traces running on the bottom. Can't see them running. Of course, they're not running on the top, so they're running on an inner layer of the uh, PCB. Once again, super duper high speed, uh, controlled impedance uh, all the way with LBJ and uh, internal ground plane. So that could be a six or uh, eight layer board. Aha, gotcha, Xilinx Kintex 7. Oh, that's a beastie. How much is that worth? That puppy's going to be at least a couple of hundred bucks. That's a bit of a beast. But there you go. This is like a classic use case for like a high-end FPGA like this uh, Kintex 1 because it's got the transceivers built in for the uh, for the uh, you know the differential pair serial it's got the serdes uh, decoders built in the serial uh, decoders essentially it's got the high speed uh, logic um, stuff it's got built in uh, memory as well for any sort of uh, caching or anything like that that needs to be done and it can do of course all the processing that's an FPGA you can get it to do anything you want you wouldn't be rolling your own uh, ASIC for something like this unless you are looking at really high volume and something like this like a three or six, 6,000 logic analyzer, you're not going to be selling them in the hundreds of thousands. You know, you're going to be selling them in the hundreds, thousands, if you're lucky. So what they're going to be implementing in there, of course, uh, is serial straight in. So the 32 or 64 channel uh, serial uh, differential pair straight into the CERDES and then into the logic array where they're going to be implementing uh, hard serial decoder functions, decoder hard serial trigger, because you can uh, trigger off various, uh, a whole slew of different protocols, so they'd all be programmed uh, in there. All your serial decoding, you can all do that in hardware, because it's all running in parallel on an FPGA, so that's the beauty of that. And yeah, I would have been surprised to see a uh, custom ASIC on this puppy, although I'm pretty much uh, convinced that the one on the lower end, the uh, logic clue, cube that we saw i think that's a custom asic which they did way way back because the company mentions stuff about designing their own uh chips for various uh products that's like in the company history part of thing but for something like this yeah you wouldn't 
you just whack a Kintex in there and Bob's your uncle. So that's certainly some uh, decent hardware in this. Um, quite professional, uh, as you'd expect from the uh, price tag. This company's been going like uh, 10 plus years or something like that. So they know their logic analyzer and they pretty much uh, specialize in this sort of stuff, protocol decoding and everything else. But yeah, as good as the hardware is, it's only as good as the uh, software, not only for the protocol decoding built into here, but also the software that uh, runs on the PC, which lets you display it and do all the timing and state analysis and, and protocol uh, decoding and uh, everything else. Although this would have uh, protocol decoding built in, it'd only be for the purposes of trigger, I believe, it wouldn't be like uh, they would be doing that, maybe sucking the data out and then do, doing the full memory decoding, I would presume, in the software on the uh, PC. But you definitely want protocol triggering in the hardware. It's useless if you're doing it on a PC. You've got to wait until it streams to the PC first, use the PC to decode it and <laughs> forget it. You're, you know, your uh, data's already flown off by the time your PC uh, triggers that. So it's all protocol uh, triggering hardware is all done in there. That's a sweet bit of kit. Now, I won't be hooking it up and uh, playing around with this, but here's this Arduino starter kit with Logic Analyzer. It's got like a cut-down version of the Logic uh, Cube we've uh, seen. And look at the uh, little ring binder uh, manual. I haven't put it in a ring binder yet, but I haven't had a look. It's got all these uh, experiments. Wow. Wow. All these glossy cards. This is, oh yeah, double-sided. This is brilliant. Wow, this is very impressive. So yeah, I couldn't find a uh, price or where this was available from. Real life applications? <sniffs> this looks really jazzy. Wow, they've put a lot of work into that. That's very impressive. So let's have a quick squeez inside the box, shall we? Ta-da! Look at this. That's what you get inside for those playing along at home. So you get, your, get a nice breadboard. You get, what is that? Oh, I squared C RGB interface. Nice. Got a USB interface. We've got a microphone preamp. By the looks of it, you've got a motor to make something spin. Um, and let's get that out of there. You get your Arduino Uno, of course. Looks like a genuine one. You get your requisite LCD. Couple of little, uh, looks like it's an eight channel logic analyzer. A little zero plus. Cute. The educator, the lap educator. So they've done just a cut down version of that. Wow, that is. And all the requisite probes and USB cables. That's fantastic. If you're after a kit with a, uh, a like a digital experimenter's kit with a built-in uh, logic analyzer that, um, and you want to play around with Arduinos, that could be really good depending on the uh, cost of that, but that's thoroughly impressive. Wow, well done, zero plus. And well done, Alberto Piganti and uh, David Anton Sanchez. And Sanchez. Sanchez. Got it. Brilliant work. All right, let's take a look at the software for the Logic Cube, shall we? Uh, I downloaded this from the website, and it turns out that it wasn't the latest version from the website. When I ran it and installed it, installed no problems, USB driver, no problems whatsoever. But then it told me, oh, it was way out of date, and here's the latest one. I downloaded a zip file, and I had to manually go do it. it not impressed. My first impression is that... No, it's a bit old school and clunky. It's actually uh, designed only for wi up to Windows uh, 2007, it says. So, you know, like, what do you say about that? And here's the version that I'm playing with, uh, 3.14.02. But, yeah, um, there just seems to be a lack of, I mean, look, uh, copyright 1997 to 2017. So it, it, it gives me, I get the impression that it is from 2007. They haven't put any mod cons into this thing now let's you know you've got all your basic stuff up here okay you've got your sample rate you've got your memory size here you've and you've got your uh, pre and post trigger control so by default 50 percent pre-trigger 50 percent post trigger and all that sort of stuff okay but have a look at the uh waveforms look i haven't actually set up anything but like the first thing i notice is like i can't drag these waveforms around i can't do anything like that now let's actually um trip well actually whoops no i'll what i'll do is like I don't mind this of course you can uh, set the trigger up on each channel to uh, positive negative positive negative slope or either slope stuff like that so I don't mind that at all so we'll set that to either slope here and I will run it 
So it's going to sit there and let me generate a signal. I've actually got the uh, DigiLent Analog Discovery feeding in uh, some signals here. So I'll feed in a UART signal. Here we go. I'll generate that. Boom. And we're in like Flynn. But look, I mean, we've got this uh, navigator window down the bottom here. Now, the software is actually pretty basic. Um, one of the frustrating things I, I encountered first is that I couldn't just, like, drag the waveforms around, like, back and forth, like, hold down the button, hold down either button and just drag them around. I had to figure out that you had to do the hand tool up here. You know, I've got to select the tool. And then it's not very responsive. It's a bit jerky. And, yes, I can zoom in and zoom out with the control key like this. And you can then see the... There you go. You can see the navigator window and scroll. That's a bit smoother. So, it, you know, the functionality is there, but it's pretty basic. And in the manual, it shows that it has uh, timing measurements between, uh, you know, it'll show you how long this was uh, low for, for example, this pulse here. But um, it's not popping up with any of that, you know, really cool stuff uh, by default or anything like that. You can go in here and you can, um, the menus are a little bit cryptic until you get used to them, but channel assignment is fairly obvious. I can go in there and uh, type that. I've uh, changed it to UART and we could have this one as a clock, for example, or something like that. So we can change that, but I can't drag, just grab them with the mouse and like drag the order of them. I mean, that's just like, you know, that's like bread and butter 101 stuff for logic analyzer playing around and setting up your waveforms and and stuff like that, but anyway, it just, it feels dated, it feels like it is from the 2000s, and they haven't really updated the interface, but it does look very powerful, I have no idea what single, what MSO is, single DSO channel, what, DC couple, what, does it actually have an oscilloscope function, no, no, what's going on? So that's really quirky. I have no idea what is going on there at all. I can't do it. What are these lines? I've got no idea. Closed DSO analog. That is really weird. Look, trigger. What? What's OPB? It's just, it's really quite, it's really quite strange. And it's reset. When I change that mode, it's reset my waveform. Jeez, it's reset everything, has it? Oh, it... It, yeah, it's not intuitive. It's not nicely polished. It's just pretty frustrating to use. Like, like straight off the bat, I'm sure you'd get used to it, but but no, the vibe I'm getting is just uh, it. Yeah, it's just not great. Not great. Look, I can't even expand that window. Can I? No, I can. I can delete channels. I can go in there and sort of delete. I can't. Do you wish to delete it? Yeah, just freaking delete it. Don't ask me. Like I can highlight those and I can delete those to get rid of them yep okay but I don't know I'm just not feeling it and I'm not sure if there's any way to uh change the color of the waveforms either like I know that you know different colors have different uh assignments on them they probably match the color coding on the thing but I I don't know like I just find that red just the, the red on the black uh kind of hard to see so yeah anyway <coughs> Now this uh, signal filter stuff here, this is kind of uh, interesting. If you read the manual, it, it basically says filtering is used to increase the record length by only storing samples when certain user-defined signals are high or low. So, you know, it's very powerful, but uh, it's certainly something that could uh, confuse a uh, first-time user, that's for sure. But hey, you don't have to use it if you don't want to. But if you accidentally clicked on that, you know, you could be in for a world of hurt. Now, one thing I don't get, okay, is we've got this uh, window down here, which doesn't really match up to the display window at the top. I mean, look, you know, like, there it is, right? It's clear. Look, it, we're, we're right on the last pulse there, but we can see all those pulses in there. We're, we're in the center like that. It takes up most of the frame, but up here, we've got all this dead space. Like, what? Um, that's just, that, that just doesn't even work properly. I don't know what the deal is there. That's just, it's hopeless. And then these numbers along here, like, you know, 12,837 what? Like, is it microseconds? <laughs> Milliseconds? Samples? What? Like, there, where's the units? There's nothing there that tells you anything. 
So it actually took me ages to figure out how to do this serial decoding in this software. It's not obvious. If you go up here, like acquisition, no, nothing doing there. Analysis, that is surely, no, nothing doing there. View, no, nothing doing there. Um, the MSOs, still don't know what that is as an optional product or something. But uh, look, what we need to do is we need to go in UART here and then channel assignments. It's not this one, but it's like add bus slash signal. But this is not where you add a bus. We have to actually sign a bus, which, okay, we need to group in the bus here. So bingo, and now we're starting to get there, and you can group various signals. So we could have, like, selected all three of those, like if we had a spy bus, for example, and then we could group those. Um, un well, we can, yeah, if we did before, we can group those into a bus. So now let's try and get this to decode a UART. And only then, if we right-click on the bus, do we get bus properties. Protocol decoders, thanks for telling us that. Um, here we go, and this is where it gets impressive, because look at all, I mean, this is, the, you can get the $139 version of this, I, I, I believe, and, and the software is the same. You get all of these. One wire, seven segment LEN module, AC97. Like, this is just CAN2, CCIR, Compact Flash, CMOS image. Wow, is that like CMOS camera? But like, look at all that. DS1302, um, that's the RTC, isn't it, I believe? Um, I, I don't think it has EMMC. Um, I think you have to look up the list, but it supports most of these, I believe. So all different I squared um, Cs, IRDA, IR modules, infrared um, decoding, key lock, code hopping stuff. This is absolutely incredible. I believe you get most, if not all, of these decoders with like the bottom of the range, 130 you know, $140 unit. So if you're just looking for a serial decoder, this could be the bomb for, you know, not much dosh at all. Anyway, we want to go in there and select our UART. Bingo, we're in like Flynn, and it obviously we haven't set that up properly yet. So we've got to go in there and select our configuration. All right, so let's go in. Everything's right here, 9600, eight data bits, one stop bit, etc. no parity. The packet... Um, oh, that's nice. We can set up, look, the uh, color for all that uh, sort of stuff. So that's jazzy. And data format, bingo. That's what we want. Binary, decimal, hexadecimal. We want ASCII. Beautiful. And use UART for free. Yay! Because they released all the uh, decoders for free, which is fantastic. So this should now decode this, hopefully. Oh, come on. It's like, it's just quirky that you have to go through that extra menu. Hello, world. There we go. Okay, we'll send that again. Let's capture. It's sitting there triggering. It probably, should it delete those waveforms when you trigger? Probably, to show you. I, yeah, I don't know. It, that's a personal preference thing. Anyway, send data. Bingo. EEV blog. Nice. And check this out. Like, there's just no spit and polish at all on uh, these fonts up here. They just look overlaid on the waveform. It's just... Nah, no, no, it's just clunky. There is one thing I do like, though, is that when you do select the bus and you go back out, it's annoying that it only does it when you go back out and save it, that it actually changes the channel names for you. It puts data, S-clock, and SS, um, the, the select line there. So that's, you know, kind of handy. You don't have to go in and do that manually. Nice touch. It's the only nice touch I've found so far, I think. But I'll tell you what, it does seem to have everything you need here. It has all the different modes in the uh, transmission direction and the data length. And you can do a virtual uh, select as well after a time period. And I, I think that's pretty much comprehensive for um, SPI bus, for example. And sure enough, if I uh, do an SPI bus and execute, I'm writing uh, AA as the command. So you can see that there's two down here. That's the command. And I'm writing AA hex. That is correct. And I'm uh, writing the next uh, data as 11 hex. So that is correct. No problems whatsoever. Yeah, check it out. It just doesn't like format this uh, font properly. Look, it, it can hang off the end and it can vanish like that and give you that result. And it's just... It's, there's no spit and polish in the way that data is actually presented. It's not The font size and everything is not scaled properly. That's pretty annoying. I expected better. 
But if you go into some of the other uh, protocol decoders like USB 2.0, for example, look, here's all the stuff that it actually uh, decodes. Fantastic. Um, and yeah, it's free. Use USB 2 for free. And we can uh, cancel out of that. Let's choose something else. What do we got here? Something that's good. Maybe oh, maybe one of people want to muck around with SM bus, for example. Once again, it's all free. All these uh, decoders, all included. Fantastic. So again, I have not seen a more comprehensive list of uh, protocols, uh, decoders, than this one. It's just absolutely remarkable. And I believe you can get this for the 135 buck unit. And check it out. It looks like we can even do like SD card uh, decoding and stuff like that for the pack for the um, uh, for the actual SD card protocol. Like, brilliant! What other logic analyzer does all this? None. But of course, right out of the block here, we can drag the cursors across like this and and do stuff like that. But there's no snapping, you know, to an edge or anything like that. You know, no small spit and polish like that at all. And well, okay, A minus B, a, a 751 watt samples. I'm presuming. Are you kidding me? Like, tell me what that is in microseconds. Time. I like that. I. I it's capable of doing it, I'm sure, but I have to select some sort of freaking timing analysis mode or something. It's just, ah, give me a break. And it's so frustrating. Like, out of the box, you, you want to be able to just, you know, check the frequency of this uh, clock, for example. I mean, anyway, you can do uh, different views, like uh, state list, for example. You can get that, so, you know, great for you uh, list aficionados. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. Look at this. Uh, bugger reading the manual. Um, look, we've got a time display. Hello. There we go. Look at the, what it, look at the size of these fonts. They're all over the place. What? What, what is that information measuring? Are you, like, what are they? 31.825 milliseconds from where to where? Like, what? I don't understand what. That is just a mess. It's an, that makes no sense whatsoever. Wow. Like, they've been doing this for so long. And, okay, so that's the sampling, the sample number. Frequency display, there we go. 31.323 hertz. But, like, show, like, little arrows on there that it's, it's detecting the right frequency. That's just, that's nuts. Like, that, that is... I do not understand what the hell is going on there. That's terrible, Muriel. Really, hide time of waveform. Like, ah, oh, no. No, 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 no. This is how not to do logic analyzer software. Ah, oh, here we go. Only if we, like, zoom in to this. Look, does it actually put 100 microseconds between there and there? That is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. This is like beta software or something this this is that like m maybe you can change the font size or something but it should automatically do that that is terrible oh no like otherwise ridiculously powerful software just ruined by spit and polish on the user interface that oh, what a shame an absolute shame but yeah, they need somebody who knows how to do a uh, GUI interface, please. And it looks like we've got a packet uh, list uh, display as well, so that's okay. And of course, the list view. Um, but uh, yeah, it does have a find capability. Ah, oh, there, there it is. A find. I found it. Data value. Ooh, it, it disappeared off screen. So you can actually search through and find stuff, so that's handy. Oh, look, I just noticed you can connect multiple lap C's. Okay. Um, RTFM for that one. I guess you can, like, all those extra, uh, uh, yeah, they've got various other um, extra pins on the connector there to allow you to um, connect multiple ones together to form a larger number of channels. Brilliant. And connect a DSO. Well, I didn't see on their webpage a DSO, so I'm not sure uh, what's going on there. Why you would even enable that? like the single DSO, you know, double DSO, when it knows that there's no DSO connected. Like, why even have that as an option? 
Hmm, I don't know. Sure enough, you go at acquisition, trigger properties, you can actually set up um, the level user defined. You can set up like 0.1 volts or something like that. So they're doing that somehow. It's kind of weird. Anyway, you can set up the uh, threshold levels based on a port. So they might have something in there, which maybe a DAC in there, which drives the voltage pin, the power pin on the level uh, chip. So I think maybe that's how they might be doing it. Um, yeah, based on the various ports. So anyway, you can actually do it. Now let's have a look at the software for the F-Series. This is a multi-thousand dollar logic analyzer. And yes, it is different software. So, ah, now we can actually look. We can drag these around. Isn't that neat? Um, can we even expand them? Look, uh, can we? Yeah, we can. Look at that. We can expand it. Exactly what you wanted from the last one. So it looks a bit jazzy, but once again, there are just, like, it is not polished at all. Look, if I expand this window, I've got three monitors set up here. So this is actually on my secondary window, which I capture on. Um, and if I try to go full screen, it just jumped over to my, um, like, my uh, main desktop screen. It can't even stay, like, it can't even expand to the full screen. I mean, they're complete and utter fail. We've got wanky dials over here. By the way, the minimum sample rate on this puppy is 5 megahertz so if you want to go under that i think you're out of luck so this one's actually uh, nicer in that you can right click over here and add protocol decoder okay that's a bit neater um but let's go up here we can actually select our uh trigger our probe type uh so we actually this is quite troublesome um it hasn't i've got a p200 probe it doesn't even support the probes they've supplied. What the? So that is just crazy. I'm not sure what's going on there. I've got the P200EM probes and they're just not in the list at all. Anyway, you can see how down here I have actually done my uh, packet, my UART packet down here and captured it. But look at all this spurious data either side here. So I presume that's because the probe is set up incorrectly. Okay, but anyway... We have the same thing going on here. I can't even... Oh, I can hold down control, but it doesn't seem to work all the time. I've had issue with this. I swear it did not work before holding down control and then doing that. But uh, anyway, so why is A0 and A1... Why are there... Oh, oh, okay. Maybe A1 is the other connection on ah okay no sorry a1 might be the other connection on that probe that other two pin header maybe that we saw on there so something weird is like i i don't know i don't know I, we can well no i won't i won't delete that anyway here's our serial data we certainly got it although not sure what that spurious thing there is check that out and once again i can't just grab this left click and pan around it's just like ridiculously frustrating where is the hand thing that we had on the previous version it's just oh, no fail absolute ah oh. so anyway we've got spurious data but that could be could be because of the probe setup so Anyway, the software is different. You can actually set up protocol decoding. So um, this is a bit nicer interface. I do like this. It's a wizard. Um, fantastic. So look at all the uh, protocols you've got. I mean, I see interfaces. That's just oh, JTAG. It's got everything. Um, unbelievable. Look at the digital audio ones. HDMI. Wow. That's just oh, MIDI, MIPI. Crazy. Um, I don't know what the JK Logic thing is, basic logic application, I, I don't know, is it some demo thing, I don't, <sighs> sample application, I don't know, but Compact Flash, EMMC, and this is just absolute, like a PM bus, um, all your various uh, buses, your infrared stuff, your IRDA, NEC, Phillips protocols, wireless protocols, the key lock logger again, it's just incredible the amount of decoders you get with this, absolutely stunning. Okay, so when you do that, it actually adds the separate uh, UART bus here, which you can actually... Oh, can you expand that? Does it let you? Yes, it does. There we go. Nice. 
Um, so this actually works slightly uh, differently. It's not the bus decoder properties in here. We're in hex at the moment, so we can't actually change it in there unlike the previous uh, software. We've actually got to go into numeric base encoding and we go to ASCII and EEV. Well, trust me, it will, if I can zoom. Ugh, I'm holding down control and now it's going vertical. Like, do I have to actually select the, ac I have to select the axes. Oh, no, I, I don't know. Anyway, EEV blog, there it is. Um, but look, you know, once again, it's not formatting the data and like uh, the, uh, the text maybe it's a little bit better, but where's this one I wanted to go uh, show you over here, this state list. Look at this, the state list. All the fonts are chopped off. Like, what? This is like a multi-thousand dollar logic analyzer and this software is just uh, so unpolished. It, it's a real shame. It's a real shame. Really, the main thing this software has going for it is the serial uh, protocol the free serial protocol decoding because everything else is just so clunky. Anyway, I'm sure it's like ridiculously powerful if you actually went in there and uh, had a look at it with the signal, uh, noise filters, math operations, file acquisition. Like, I'm, I'm sure it will eventually do the business. Um, but just driving this thing is just... Uh, no, no, get someone who knows how to do a decent GUI, for goodness sake. And if we actually go into options over here, then we can uh, find our waveform. And once again, they've got the silly frequency, number of samples, time thing, don't show values. Why can't when you put your cursor over it, automatically, like, or left click or something, or automatically say, you know, a button up here which says, like, auto uh, cursor mode or something, it automatically tells you the frequency, the time period between there, and all sorts of stuff like that. Anyway, ah. So let's go, let's go time, and we're in, hang on, oh that one's a little bit more polished is it, slightly more polished, at least it's not overhanging, but once again, no font size scaling, so yeah, it's just really amateur hour. And once again, it looks like we have no ability to snap cursors or anything like that, like real basic stuff. Aha! I stand corrected on the probes. Sorry, I goofed that up completely. They did actually include in the packet um, some 120 LV probes, which are in here. Now, here's an example. Oh, no. There, uh, I thought I had it where it didn't do the protocol decoded. Anyway, the same window thing like in the other software. Look, look, it's got extra space at the end. It just doesn't render that... Uh, preview window correctly. That's just nuts. Anyway, um, I've got the 120LV Pro, which is the low voltage CMOS probe, and it's got two channels. The probe I was using before is actually the EMMC uh, probe, so that was entirely different, designed for probing an entire EMMC um, signal. So um, I've now got the regular, um, well, regular low voltage uh, CMOS uh, TTLE type. They do have a TTL probe specifically, um, but you have to get the specific type, and this is a two channel. So there's a, there's a 32 ports on the unit itself, 32 USB ports, and you can get up to 64 channels because each probe supports two, depending on what you're probing. So there you go. I resampled it, and now we don't get any of the crazy data. So that's just fine. So, yep, sorry about that. EV blog, that's correct. But why, why do you have to put data? Like, why does that word data have to be there? Why? That's just totally redundant. So anyway, that's a look at the uh, Zero Plus logic analyzers and well, I the high end, like the hardware is really good. Um the software I it's it's almost a fail. It like it's it's going to do the business, but it's just it's just not polished at all, which is a real shame because this probably has the most serial decoders of any logic analyzer that I've used. So I yeah, but anyway, if you can get like this one for what is it the sixteen sixteen or something for like one hundred and thirty bucks and get all those serial decoders, that could be uh, very very useful, very uh, well worth uh, checking out. And you can see that they've got uh, protocol analyzers as well. Oh, what's I squared C S P I control center? I wonder. Jeez, they've got all sorts of stuff. The website's a bit weird, but uh, anyway, hmm. 
And we have to do the starter kit in another in software control. I squared C SPI control center. Oh, this is the is this this generator? I think it might be the uh, protocol generator. No, anyway, hmm, weird. Look at all sorts of stuff. Anyway, thank you very much, Zero Plus, for uh, sending those in. A lot more work on the software required, uh, please. Um, it just would make the experience a heck of a lot better because your hardware seems to be quite reasonable. Anyway, I hope you found uh, that interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, comment down below. Catch you next time. Sorry about my voice, by the way. I'm just sick as a dog at the moment. Uh, Going to go have a lie down on the beanbag. Catch you next time.